is Super Ty. I am joined with my good friend, Comic Book Brando. That's me. And we're going to be talking about all the cool books that are coming out tomorrow, May 8th. Not all the cool books, but many of them. Yes, there's actually quite a few more that are coming out. Uh, I just, we just didn't have time to read them all, to talk about them all. Yeah, we can only, can only do so many. Yeah, exactly. Uh, first off, I want to say thank you everybody who came to Free Comic Book Day. It was it a blast. Was awesome. I had a great time. I hope you did too. It was a super fun day. It was. It I, always is. But I, it was like, it was kind of nice though because like if you showed up, you got to go inside for Free Comic Book Day. Exactly. And uh, I ate a lot of pizza that day. It was great. There was pizza. There was donuts. Yeah. There was, and our back room was just full of <laughs> trashy food yeah. to keep us going, keep yeah. us strong. I think I had four rock stars all day. Oh God. That, oof, that makes my kidneys hurt. Kept me going. Well, I'm going to start with a new series that's starting called Batman and the Outsiders. Now, this isn't your actual, you know, your old school team of outsiders. You know, there's no metamorpho happening there. This ain't your dad's outsiders. Exactly. Uh, this consists of the Signal, Orphan, uh, Katana, and Black Lightning. And Batman, sort of. Uh, so the whole point of this book is... <laughs> so it's half your dad's outside. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Uh, so Batman is basically saying to Black Lightning, Hey, this is your team. I want you to, you know, take care of business. Here, here's your first mission. And, uh, and then it just goes from there. Now, all, all these people don't really like each other a whole lot. Uh, but they're all searching for this one girl that was part of a... Um, best way to put it is underground city made of billionaires trying to create their own metahumans. And she was an escapee of that, so she's trying to, you know, just be on the lamb, you know. Call me Mint, Lan uh, Mint Jelly, because I'm on the lamb. <laughs> uh, thank you, Simpsons. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I really enjoyed it. I'm going to come back to it. I can't wait to see uh, what happens in this. Corey Smith says, so much Conan this week. <laughs> yeah, they're, like every Conan book is coming out this week. It is. We're going to talk more about that in a little bit. Um, but, yes, if you're a Conan fan, it is your week. So it is our week shazam number five so did you were you excited about the new movie did you enjoy it quite a bit i sure did i did it made me more intrigued about the the comic so yeah. i picked it up this week and this is a fun comic if you are all about that movie uh we've got the characters that we saw in the film portrayed <laughs> as they are so uh, it's kind of like a whole new era for for shazam and and the, the, well, i guess you can't even call them that anymore his pals. <laughs> the Shazam family. Yes, the Shazam family. Um, plus, you've got Black Adam in this issue. Oh, really? What's he up to? Let's find out and see uh, what's going on in all the various magical lands that uh, the, the whole team is trapped in. Nice. My next one is, I was a little curious about it because it says, The Flash, his origin starts here in issue 70. Uh, <laughs> so this is, more, this is Flash year one. Uh, this is kind of a retelling of his um, origin in a kind of more modern way. Huge twist at the end of this issue, though, that I was not expe uh, expecting because, you know, he's... He's learning, like, oh, what kind of footwear do I need to wear because he keeps burning up his sneakers. And, like, oh, well, he needs to cover his ears so that way he can hear over wind shear and all this other stuff. Like, there's scientific reasons for everything in a suit. But then he also starts discovering, if he runs too fast, time travel. So, oh, yeah. So, a lot of twists and turns in this. Uh, but it was a really good book. I enjoyed it, and I'm going to be uh, checking out Year One Part Two. Discoveries of many flashbacks. War of the Realms Journey into Mystery. Mm. This is the second issue by the McElroys, world famous podcasters and adventurers, if you will. Yeah. Um, so in this team, they've got Miles Morales, they've got Death Locket, they've got uh, Kate Bishop, Kate Bishop Hawkeye, Thor's dog Thori, uh, Sebastian, uh, what's his name, the Druid. Oh yeah, Sebastian Druid. Yeah, is that his last name, Druid? Yeah, he's uh, he's from Secret Warriors. Oh wow. Yeah. And, uh, oh, that's right, the, like the grandson. Yeah. Nice. And uh, that explains why he's so young. I was like, why is he so young? And Balder the Brave. Uh, they are sent on a mission to protect uh, the uh, Odin and Lady Freya's new baby. Yeah. Um, and what they happen upon is a strange community of RVers with a secret. <laughs> okay. This is a great book, very fun, uh, a lot of laughs, and uh, it's just a, a pretty cool story from someone who's 
uh, you know, new to comics, so we get kind of like a fresh take, new voice, and uh, I really enjoy that kind of thing. And this is a team that has never been a team before, so a lot of fun interactions. Uh, we, we should still have the first issue, right? Yep. Uh, check that out if you haven't yet, and uh, enjoy the second issue tomorrow. Thunder. I wish that when you said Shazam earlier that Thunder would hit, because that would have been awesome. That would have been cool. War of Realms, new Agents of Atlas. So I'm a huge fan of the original Agents of Atlas series uh, from, I guess, God, 15 years ago? Jimmy Woo. Yeah, Jimmy Woo's team. So this is about all these heroes from the continent of Asia getting together and taking care of, bear with me when I say this, here we go, Mustapulheim, Must Mustapulheim. Yeah, that's right. The fire dimension. And so the Queen of Cinders is trying to take over, uh, at this point, Korea and the Philippines. But, oh no, these guys are going to stop them. Uh, huge fan of Greg Pak, who's writing this. He really, he actually created the... He did the original one, didn't he? Yeah, well, he did um, the new Agents of Atlas, like, that was in the Champions book in the Totally Awesome Hulk series. I, it was... Uh, uh, well, yeah, it wasn't Pack. it was... Uh... Jeff Parker. Correct. Yeah, Jeff Parker. But like, I'm I'm in. Uh, there's actually some new heroes that are debuting in this issue also, so it might be a hot item. So get here early to get a copy. Is the bear new? I think the bear is new. The bear is not new. The bear's not new. No. Who's that bear? His name's Io. He's a spirit bear. That's the name of my movie. No, oh, Io. Who's that bear? Who's that bear? <laughs> <laughs> also starring Madonna from Who's That Girl? Weird. Yeah. Yeah. The Batman Who Laughs, number five. Check out that cover. Is that not just terrifying? Yeah, we pretty rough. We emulated this cover for our Twitter post about it. It looks bad. It's pretty. It's uh, it's my new author photo. Yeah. Uh, yes, yeah, so Batman is sort of being corrupted, if you will. He's got some toxins running through his veins. Uh, meanwhile, the Batman Who Laughs has a whole plan that's going to involve the Court of Owls. Pretty intense stuff. Um, I don't want to give away any, any spoils, but it's like very dark story uh, that like has to do with Gotham's past and its future. What what's going to happen and what's it going to mean for uh, the the whole city if Jim Gordon and Batman activate Last Laugh? Oh. My next one is Invaders, number five, by our good friend Chips and Dark. Yeah, a good friend. So this uh, book it it says so on the title, World War Namor. So Namor is tired of it. He's been a real Namor about He's this been a thing. really big Namor about everything in this whole series. So uh, he has a plan to defend Atlantis from America, but that involves some espionage, some uh, spycraft, and a crap ton of missiles. So uh, basically everybody who is in the invaders that are still around, they're trying to knock some sense into Namor, but it's just, you know, he's being a Namor about it. So, uh, I've been really digging this series a whole lot. It has, you know, the original Human Torch, Jim Hammond in it. It has, um, of course, Winter Soldier and Captain America. But yeah, this one is, uh, I don't see a happy ending at the end of this series. I'm pretty curious where they're going to go with yeah, it. Yeah, I don't see a happy ending. I'm also curious about what keeps that shell held up on his, uh... Oh, it's an gosh. Audi belly button. <laughs> gross. Yes. <laughs> Not gross, the Audi belly button. They're kind of little. Yeah. Do you Audi or any? Oh, I'm an any, my friend. All right. Conan the Barbarian, number six, as prophesied by the Oracle Corey Smith. <laughs> cool. Yes. So, Conan, uh, the best thing about a Conan story is they don't happen in the order of his life. In the original novels and in like, the best of the comics, they jump around throughout his career. Uh, this time, we've got Conan uh, helping out the people of... Uh, Tura, Turin, and uh, they're not really having it. They're not really good at listening to this this uh, large Sumerian barbarian. They're being very Namor about it. They're being very Namor about it. Um, but this also ties in. We get like on the previous issues, we get a flash of um, what this is leading to. Mm. What um, uh, the combined storyline, you know, we get to hear, see how he's become so powerful. We get to see his, his uh, uh, rise to to glory, and what that's going to cost him towards the end of his kingly career. Mm. So good. My next one is Captain America by Ta-Nehisi Coates as well as Adam Kubert. 
So, Cap's in a supermax prison, because uh, everybody still thinks he's Stevel from Secret Empire, and, <coughs> hey, I didn't come up with it. I know. But, uh, unfortunately, this whole prison is run by Baron Von Strucker, so, Ooh. so it's not a good time for Cap, but he's finding allies and all these other supervillains that are there, like members of the Wrecking Crew are actually kind of turning around, trying to be good guys and stuff like that. So, basically... It, this is all leading up to a giant prison break, I'm sure of it. Uh, but, you know, it's kind of fun seeing Cap, you know, kind of getting in with it with the, like, you know, bad guys. Just like, hey, let, let's, let's, let's dump this joint, you know, kind of thing. What are the odds of we seeing a, a longest yard situation where they put together a football team? Well, there, there is some tackling happening in here, so they're probably getting to it eventually. Oh, nice. Yeah. All right. Love that movie, the original. Catwoman <laughs> number 11. Uh, look at that Archer cover. Man, that's a striking cover. He's so good at drawing these characters. <laughs> James. Once again, James, I did not come up with steve -El. That was something that the internet came up with. Steve. And Brad says hello. Hello, Hello, Brad. Brad. Um, yeah, so Catwoman is on the run, and she is going to uh, run afoul a Hollywood premiere. Mm. Surely that might be problematic while she makes her getaway and breaks out a friend. Awesome stuff, very heist centric. Uh, plus, we got a, a not so pretty face from the past uh, looking to uh, cause some more trouble for uh, a certain Gotham cat. One of my favorite books is actually coming to an end Murder Falcon. So, if you like heavy metal of any sort, then this book is for you. Uh, in case you don't know what's happening in this, uh, every musical instrument has a spirit animal kind of attached to it for, for metal. So, of course, this guitar has Murder Falcon. And all these other monsters are invading, and you basically fight monsters with metal, and it's pretty great. Uh, bittersweet end in this, but also some surprises, uh, surprise cameos I wasn't expecting, like, you know who that is. <laughs> I sure do. Yeah, and then, uh, let me see if I can get to it really quick. Sorry, everybody, you should pick this up anyways because it's really good. Uh, so what's the drums animal? The drums animal is actually a giant um, mastodon, which nice. is pretty cool. But like, yeah, that's the temple of metal and it's, you know. Oh. Yeah. Huh. So it's a really fun book. I've been enjoying this a whole lot. Uh, that's all I'm gonna say about it. You should pick it up, it's great. Very cool. Captain Marvel number five, Wasteland Showdown. This is the finale of the original, of the first story arc in the series. Uh, they've been trapped in a dystopian uh, sort of future, a few weeks in the future. Uh, Captain Marvel has given her power. She's let herself become basically absorbed by Rogue, which is the thing that was basically her biggest nightmare since she was tra basically trapped in her psyche for a while. Mm -hmm. uh, worst thing that could possibly happen to her, but that's going to be very helpful in defeating the nuclear man because that breaks his control of Rogue. Oh. Awesome stuff, powerful ladies of the Marvel Universe fighting back, uh, but uh, also a hidden bomb creating a very drastic situation. Oh goodness. Love this first story arc. It's awesome to see this sort of story uh, taking place in the Marvel Universe, kind of a weird sort of uh, Mad Maxi kind of fight against a Zardoz-like character. Yeah, pretty great. I love every single part of that <laughs> sentence you just said. And it's dead off, too. Yeah. So, highly recommend this first story arc. Check it out if you haven't yet. It's a lot of fun, very cool characters. Highly recommend it. My next one is a new series called Excellence. So, I'll try and give you a really brief summary. So, there's these certain families that have this like bloodline that essentially is magic infused and you uh, it, magic is only allowed through the suns like so ladies can't do magic and once you hit a certain level of your aptitude with magic you're giving a charge which means like say Brandon had a big day of like something that would change his life I would be forced to make sure that a positive thing happened out of that not a bad thing hmm. uh, but there's also a lot of family intrigue in this book it's kind of like um, Harry Potter meets Legacy? I don't know, That's, that was a horrible way to start this. Anyways, dark magic, uh, a lot of cool magic fights happening in this too. Uh, I can't wait to see what happens in the rest of this because it's a very original book. It's kind of hard to compare it to something, so yeah.
That was a horrible summary, but I hope you pick <laughs> it up. If he didn't sell you on it, you should still check it out. Uh, James liked that the lightning or the thunder hit right uh, as you open up the Murder Falcon. Yeah. And Corey Smith says, "Excellence, it's really interesting." I'm looking it up right now. What else Brandon Thomas has done? One second. In the meantime, Detective Comics number 1003. So it turns out Arkham Knight is not anyone we knew or expected. But who is she? That's right. Who is she? Uh, we're going to find out a little bit more, very little bit more about her, uh, and maybe uh, some details about the eclipse. Am I being cryptic? Yes. Yes. <laughs> but... Will Robin be able to escape? Can Batman find him in time? Find out in this issue tomorrow. Okay. Uh, so, Excellence, Brandon Thomas, he actually did a very cool book a while back called Horizon for Skybound. And that was like the uh, reverse alien invasion book where humans were the bad guys and stuff like that. He also did something called The Mini Adventures of Miranda Mercury. I don't, I haven't read that, unfortunately. Uh, and then uh, he also did a book called Noble for Lion Forge a while back. Um, my next one is a series that I've been loving forever that is really weird called Ice Cream Man. So, <laughs> like that cover. Yeah, this book is whoosh. It is pretty weird. Uh, so there's a lot of like little one-shot stories happening through this with one connecting guy called the Ice Cream Man, who's this malevolent evil deity slash dark elf kind of thing. And this story follows the ship called the Ark, which is, you know, essentially what it sounds like. It's looking for a new world to colonize because we destroyed our planet. Uh, but there's not a lot of good, happy things happening in this book. It's pretty darn disturbing. And that's why I like it. It's a really fun, really fun series. Sometimes we like to be disturbed. Yeah. Unnatural. Uh, Issue 9. That is quite a cover. <laughs> Maybe I'll set that cover down. Um, awesome story though really loving uh, the art by Mirka and Dolfo uh, Leslie has had enough and yet she cannot escape the albino this ancient wolf spirit that has basically inhabited her her mind her body her psyche and is taking over and there's nothing she can do to stop him uh, meanwhile her friends don't know how to how to handle this either and I say I use the friends loosely because her friends have been murdered but the people that are with her are trying to get her to a safe place to find out what's going on to stop it from happening uh, because they know the true danger of the albino hmm. uh, very awesome very you know conflicted characters that are just trying to do the right thing and and we get a little bit of backstory on Leslie too, a little bit of uh, family history if you will Awesome book, highly recommended, gorgeous artwork, intriguing storytelling, um, probably my favorite pick of the year. Oh, goodness. I know, right? It well, is really good. I love it, too. At least for a non-superhero thing. It's been pretty, I don't know, I'll have a different pick of the year next week, so. Yeah. I'm really enjoying it, though. My next one is Dragon Ball Super Volume 5. So, this one's for all the Marvels. Uh, Marvels, not Marvels, I'm sorry. This one's for all the Marvels. Uh, so, this is like the big, huge climactic battle involving future trunks and an evil Goku and alternate dark future histories and all this crazy stuff. But it's all building to this kind of ending moment. Of course, there's going to be more following on because, as Goku says, it gets crazier from here. Yeah, it does. So uh, if you've been I saw a cloud about the curb stuff. Yeah, there's there's a <laughs> yeah. It gets crazy. That's pretty crazy. Uh, so yeah, definitely check this out if you're a fan of Dragon Ball Z or any other kind of action manga. Action manga. Corey agrees with your ice cream man recommendation. Yeah. And uh, thinks that the Skybound book looks fantastic. Oh, James guesses Bryce Wayne. Mm. Mm. Red Sonia and Vampirella meet Betty and Veronica. Hot. <laughs> the two dynamite bad girls, a warrior from the uh, Hyborian Age and a vampire. Space goddess? I don't remember what her current lore is. Isn't right she now. an alien? Well, yeah, she was originally, originally an, she alien. Was an alien from yeah. the planet Draculon. I think that's not the case anymore, but. Uh, Oh, should be the vampirella book from free comic book day was pretty cool and it was will probably get me back into reading that character um but they meet the two riverdale uh 
the team up of Betty and Veronica, and they're all seeking out who is killing teachers at Riverdale. Hmm. At least one body shows up. I could, one of them at least is a teacher. I don't yeah. Know. Um, fun, weird murder mystery, little uh, um, kind of winky at you at times. Uh, but I like all the Archie stuff in the recent years, which is a surprise because I never cared about Archie at all. Same. And uh, check out that Frank Avia cover. There's lots of great covers for this book. So if this is one you wanted to check out because of four powerful ladies, you have your choice of covers. My next one is Justice League Graveyard of God. So this is technically volume two of the Justice League, the new Justice League series that I've been raving about recently. Uh, this mostly involves the drowned earth uh, stuff that involved with Aquaman and like these old sea gods attacking everybody. Uh, but in the background, there is also a ton of Legion of Doom stuff happening. So yeah, it's a uh, man, epic. There's a lot happening in that book. A lot happening in this book. Pratt says to try to watch the uh, Vampirella movie. He dares us. Ooh. Accepted. Ooh, I've seen a bit of it. Rough? It's pretty bad. Excellent. It's pretty bad. Um, yeah, how do I get the Vampirella movie? I'd watch it. Yeah. Uh -huh. I have to go visit, visit Brad. Ghost Hog. So this is a story about uh, a young hog who is cut down before her time. Oh. Uh, yes, and so there's a, though it looks very, very like a animated kids book kind of style, this is a, it's a lot of pathos to it, a lot of, uh, a little bit of vengeance and anger, um, but it, you know, it tells a story about like kind of letting go. So there's, there's a real deepness to this despite maybe just looking like a kid's book at first glance. Uh, it actually kind of has the weight of like a, like a martial arts movie. Oh. Yeah. Um, and there was a free comic book day sampler for it, which is why I, I picked it up to begin with, because I normally, let's be honest, I'm not going to look at this book normally, but I read the free comic book day sampler, I'm like, this is kind of heavy. Yeah, it was actually really cool. Yeah, it was kind of intense. So uh, if that sounds like your kind of thing, there's a nice big volume available tomorrow. My next one is from a series that's been over for a little bit, but it still is one of my favorite ones in the past couple of years called The Woods. Uh, if you're, uh, This is the yearbook edition, so this is the very first year of The Woods, so like the first 12 issues. Uh, if you're not familiar with this, whew, it was an epic. So basically the whole premise is these, this entire school, including like the buildings, football stadium, everything, bright light flashes, and now they're on an alien planet and they're stuck and nobody's safe. Uh, like in the first issue, like 40 eighth graders get eaten by monsters, like nobody's safe. And uh, kind of reminiscent of William Golding's Lord of the Flies, but with a little sci-fi bend to it, and uh, like just surprises constantly happening through there. Once again, nobody's safe in this book. But a really fun book, it won the GLAAD Award for Outstanding Comic Book, so this was like, you know, this also had a lot of uh, weight to it, of, you know, good cultural positivity. Some representation? Yeah. Pearl, Volume 1. Man, does this book kick ass. This is so good. Uh, Bendis doing what Bendis does, dare I say best, and that's his own unique characters in a, in a noir-like setting. Uh, Pearl Tanaka is a tattoo artist, and at her mother's death, she's so upset, she tattoos herself with an empty tattoo gun. Now she's got this strange tattoo that, like, like emerges when she's flushed or upset or uh, heated or you know anything going on kind of like emotional uh, she's wrapped up in like a mob war and there's a crazy uh, pornographer twins that are trying to like get on top of the crime crime scene mm -hmm. um, she's got a best friend who just like they constantly are like sassing each other so good hey that reminds hey, me of some people it's like a it's like the perfect team that you want to see it's like a little bit of sass, but a lot of love. <clears throat> what we bring you every week. Yeah. Um, awesome, awesome book. Beautiful, beautiful art from Michael Gatos. Uh, this was the team behind Alias, and I'm so glad to see them back together. And this book is just killer. I love it, and it's so weird and fun and action-y and just cool. So if you want to, like, just the kind of the weirdest wild ride in comics, this is a this is a contender. 
Also, uh, like, I don't know who does the coloring on that, but is it Gatos that does the coloring? Uh, let's find out. I don't think it is. Yeah, kind maybe of, it is. Maybe it is. Well, Gatos' art on this is, like, on point. And, like, sometimes he's not my favorite artist ever, but, like, in this, it, like, just the colors he uses and the saturation levels, it's freaking amazing. I mean, I've always loved Gatos, so... <clears throat> His alias stuff, even when like the same panel was used like eight times, it told a story. It yeah. Kind of like it had a feeling to it, but uh, he's he's definitely even grown as an artist, even more so than yeah. You know what I've already loved. He's just even better now, and this book is just shows it off so well. Yeah, such so a good, good book. My what last. Did, what did he oh. do his own coloring? I did not know. My last one is something that I've been meaning to reread, and I'm glad it's coming out in this format. Thor by Jason Aaron, The Complete Collection, Volume 1. So we all know the War of Realms is like his big hurrah for all this Thor stuff, but this is where it all began with Thor, God of Thunder. Uh, it's so cool. It is really good. Uh, hang on, Brad. <laughs> he's, he's I'll, on board. He's I'll address on board. this in a second. Uh, but yeah, this is just such a good book, and I, it's hard to describe without just giving away everything. Uh, there's a God Butcher, there's different her story live too yeah there's like different it starts off epic and yeah. just goes from there there's also like thor th during like all throughout time where there's like king thor there's young thor before he even gives me all near all this stuff man whew, it's awesome and i'm gonna be rereading it because i've been needing to for quite some time if you've never read thor it is a perfect yeah perfect jumping on point this is the thing that will make you a fan of thor comics if you're not already yeah, it's awesome. So, yeah. What's your last one? Or first, let me address this. Brad, <laughs> yes. I like Michael Gatos now, but at first I didn't. So, I'm sorry on that. It's fair. I didn't like Jack Kirby when I was a kid. Yeah, same here. But now I, I love Kirby. too blocky looking, and now I can't even look at it without just, just being in, just knocked out. Yeah. Just completely just, wow, so much action and everything on the page. So... We grow as fans, yeah. just like they grow as artists. Or sometimes they just sort of <laughs> become... Parodies of themselves? A little bit. Yeah. I won't name names, but there are certain... I know characters. who you're talking about. You do. <laughs> Blackbird, The Great Beast. This is volume one of a, of a new series by Sam Humphreys and Jen Bartell. I love Jen Bartell's art style. I mean, it's just like... When I first saw this cover, I'm like, yeah, but what's the interior look like? Oh. It looks like that. Yeah. Because it's the same artist. Um, beautiful <laughs> book. This is about a secret magical, like, sort of underworld of Los Angeles. Um, uh, Nina is a girl that saw a glimpse of it, and she just spends her entire life trying to find it. Not her entire life, but her whole young life trying to find it. And then it swoops in and takes her sister, mm. of all people. Mm. Uh, in a rage and completely upset, she's determined to find out what happened to her sister, what's going on, and, and who are these paragons, and how to be uh, amongst them. Very cool, very stylistic. Uh, it's got sort of a neo-noir kind of feeling to it, very colorful. I really like this far more than I expected I would, and uh, I highly recommend it if you want something a little bit different, a little bit... Uh, you know, high on style and intrigue and, and magic and different from what you normally read. Nice. So let's get talking about what we have going on. Uh, we're having a new ladies night coming up on May 30th. I gotta respond to this. Oh, okay. Jason Aaron and Walt Simonson are the best Thor writers in my opinion. I agree, but you gotta throw that Lee Kirby in there too. I also gotta say, uh, Straczynski and Koi Pell. I really loved their run. I uh, liked their run a lot, yeah, too. Yeah, that was really good, too. So, All good. Yeah. All good runs. Yeah. Uh, ladies Night. Ladies Night. That's going to be May 30th. Uh, we're going to have, hopefully, a special guest. I'm still talking with him to try and nail that uh, appearance down, too. Uh, but also, you know, if you've never been to one of our Ladies Nights, we haven't. But all lady types are welcome. There's... I steal a cookie before yeah, we... <laughs> I leave. <laughs> one thing that I think a whole lot of the uh, 
ladies that work, ladies night us. We get one cookie each before we leave, so that's pretty nice. We appreciate that, lady employees of Austin Books. Yeah, but there's also like snacks, a couple of drinks, and just hanging out, talking comics, nice little safe space yeah. you know, to do that. So that's going to be coming up. Uh, it seems very nice. Yeah, it's coming up at the end of the month. What do you got? Um, well, we do have some, some signings coming up that we're not quite ready to talk about, So, but as soon as we are, we will mention them to I, you. I do have one that we can talk about. So do you. Yes, uh, on uh, May 17th, uh, I just got their names here just to make sure that I say them correctly, Nicholas Afflege? Sorry, uh, and Sarah, <laughs> Sorry. Sarah Delane are going to be coming down. They did this really cool book called Little Girls, which is about two girls in Africa, like hunting a monster. It came out last week. Uh, two weeks. Very recently. Yeah, it came out recently. Um, cool thing about this is they're also bringing two bands to play with them. That's cool. Yeah. So, uh, will they be playing here in the story? Yes, I have a spot picked out and everything for them. So that's by an outlet, so they can use it. Um, so that's going to be May 17th. It's going to start about 6, but the music won't really start until about 7. They're going to be here till about 9 -ish. On what day is this? That is Friday, May 17th. A Friday. Yeah, which is also the same day that I am opening up for the Toadies, so unfortunately I will not be here for that. Oh. Yeah, so I felt really bad. I talked to... Uh, uh, <laughs> you let them know? Yeah, well, yeah, I let Sarah, the artist, I was like, hey, this sounds really awesome and I wish I could be here, but unfortunately I can't and she was like I told her why and she goes oh no that's awesome go have fun mm -hmm. so that one I do know about that we can pr start promoting now very cool yeah and maybe some more in the near future yeah uh, also always buying comics and collections I took about took a look at about three or four today mm -hmm. and picking out some sometimes I'll pick up the good stuff or sometimes I'll just buy it all so if you have stuff you want to sell bring it in let me know when you'd like me to take a look at it and I'll Pencil that in. Typically Tuesdays through Saturdays are best. I'm uh, always happy to take a look at collections, comics, uh, vintage toys, old video games. If you know you have a valuable sports card and you're positive it's valuable, I'll take a look at that. So even stuff you don't necessarily see in the store, uh, I'm interested in taking a look at. So bring it on by. Let us know. Shoot me a message. Cool. Through the store, Facebook. That'll work. Yeah, that could work. Magic cards. I buy a bunch, bunch of stuff. What else you got going on? I really don't have a lot right now. So. Oh, so I'm just going to keep going to me. Yeah. Right. So magic cards, speaking of, we're going to be doing our casual magic night tonight, every Tuesday night from 7 to 10. Uh, we do our uh, also very casual Friday night magic every Friday. We're going to start booster drafting. I'm very excited about that. But if you're not into that, we also have folks that play the commander format. That's a good time. Saturday night's our game night. Mm -hmm. I keep busting out Fireball Island. I bought every expansion for it. <laughs> I can't get enough of this this game knocking marbles and flipping tigers. Yeah. It's so good. You should come hang out and play Fireball Island with us. Nice. Getting Now we have powers that our shirts give us. Yep. <laughs> yeah. It's so All of that sounds great. There's bees, there's snakes, there's fireballs of course. There's a boulder now. It's a good time. Excellent. On this giant vacuum form island. Sounds great. Will you incur the wrath of Volcar? Uh, maybe. I mean, <laughs> I'm feeling feeling pretty saucy, so you never know. Or we got about 50 other games you can play, and it's all free. Just come out, hang out, play some games, learn some stuff, have some fun. I bought some candy for the shop. Too. We There's have candy can now. We have there. candy bars at Outlaw Poon now, yeah. so, and they're kept in the fridge, so they're not all melty and gross. Yeah. Swing on by, grab a, a soda pop and a candy bar, and play some games. Play some games. Oh, cool. You got anything else going on? I think that's about it. Cool. Well, uh, you can follow me at Super Ty Denton One. You can follow you at Comic Book Brando. You can follow both of us at Awesome Books, and we will see you tomorrow. Hopefully, the rain is going to be letting up by then because it's, it's pouring pretty hard. Bye.